That sounds good. So Looks take like it away. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thanks everybody for joining the call. Looks like we have a few people on board right now. Ken uh, Kaiser. I see Bob Chen. I see Bruce um, and myself. I think uh, Stu was also going to join the call uh, to give sort of a briefing on what was um, what was happening. I'm going to get the. I, I suspect everybody, uh, Ken and uh, Bob, did you guys see the email from Karen on the summary that uh, Susanna sent? Uh, I don't think that I have. I think. Um, yeah, I don't remember seeing it. Let me see if Karen's just okay. sent it. Let's see here. Hold on a sec. Karen was having some difficult uh, connection issues uh, where she is, uh, but she was able to get an email off. So let's see here. And then Stu, uh, Stu chimed in to that email saying that he would be on at four to, um, you know, I wonder if he knows how to connect in. He has been on before. He sent a, a Word document of a marriage EOS disasters report. I can forward that to. If I, hey Bruce, if I forward it to the disaster list it does it have to get approved before it gets out to everybody no no you can just forward something or yeah well okay it's better if you copy and paste it into a new email but I, but that's fine it, it should get there here's a karen's uh karen's thing let me see if i can put this in the yeah i i I don't know if the chat chat will take this. Just threw Karen's uh, email to the list in the chat. Yeah, it's got here. some links in it. Right, right, it does. And Stu sent some links as well. So let me um. I know Ken is is on, and so is Bob. So um, let me just get uh, send this to you guys, which is Karen's email. I just sent that to you, um, Bob and Ken. <clears throat> and I had also made a mention of Maggie. I wasn't sure if Maggie would be able to join the call today. Uh, so she could give a little bit of an update on how the meeting went down there. <clears throat> I did have a chance to, um, to join the, uh, or, or to see Maggie a couple weeks ago when I was in California for the National Weather Association meeting. And I went over to JPL for, uh, for a few hours to, uh, I gave a presentation there and, and um, uh, visited Maggie on, asked her how the trip went. She said she was pretty busy and kind of focused on one thing, um, helping to, to get uh, things together. So she wasn't able to attend everything. But, um, let's see. Oh, Bruce, yeah, I see that link, link to Summit information. Does that link contain all of Karen's in, info? The Google Doc link? It might. I don't know. Oh, that that link. I see that link is the website for the disasters risk reduction activity across Americas. So, yeah, there's a Dropbox thing from Susanna's presentation. Um, and a, let me see what the Google Doc is. Uh, 
posters and slides from the summit. Oh, right, right. I see those. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess, Bruce, you know, I can pull it up. Um, I can pull up Karen's attachment and then okay. share my screen. So I also pasted in there a link to the, the notes file that we usually use for this meeting. So we might want to put some notes in there as we're going along too. Okay, and Maggie joined the call. Hi, everyone. Hey, Maggie, how are you? Good, how are you? Sorry I'm late, I had another call. Oh, no worries, no worries. We were just talking about, uh, Maggie, the meeting down in South America and um, and how that went, and I know Stu said he was going to join the call. I haven't, I don't have my dashboard up right now, and I'm just sharing my my screen. Um, and I think this was uh, this was more like the agenda. Is that what this is? Uh, it looks like uh, Susanna's uh, summary. Is this Susanna's summary? Okay. Oh, yes, it is. Susanna Adama's participation. So before we, you know, just go over this, because I just looked at this document as well. Maggie, I was just wondering if you could give us a little overview, and then if Stu uh, connects, he can he can um, uh, chime in a little bit, too. Just an overview of, of the summit, or just like what happened? Yeah, just what happened, your experiences down there. Um, you know, we're all curious. We were all kind of involved in it, um, you know, trying to get ready. Or, or help Susanna get ready uh, for it, but just to kind of hear generally how it went. Sure, um, I, I actually was was a, a little bit absent for, for a lot of the summit because I was busy planning the um, culminating event, which was the, the uh, um, tabletop exercise, which um, occurred on Thursday. So um, I was sort of in and out the rest of the week and, and attended um, only a few of the sessions, but it was really great. It was, um, so it was a week long, um, uh, meeting down in Argentina, we had um, folks from across the Americas um, down there to basically talk about, um, you know, the uh, Earth observations and uh, uh, scientific research and the emergency response processes um, for how we could, you know, support disaster response and disaster risk reduction in the Americas. Um, there were a number of um, plenary and um, breakout sessions with um, speakers talking about um, various topics in this um, uh, regionally and uh, sort of internationally and sort of um, talking about science topics, et cetera. Um, and uh, people from all over um, Latin America and also from the U.S. came. Uh, and then we also had the poster sessions, and Susanna had presented um, the, uh, the ESIP Disasters Cluster poster, and she said it was very, very well attended, and people had a lot of great questions. Um, and also, I think that uh, we had a presentation, she had a presentation in the, um, one of the, the data understanding, or sorry, the data um, sharing um, information, uh, sharing uh, sessions that I think that the OGC folks um, were part of the, the, the session planners. And she said, I think that that one went really well too. And uh, then we have the response exercise, which was a lot of fun, um, a lot of stress, but a lot of fun. And I think that went very well. And we're gonna be working on a after action report for that. And uh, for the, uh, the meeting as a whole, we collected a lot of, um, feedback and I think that I'm not sure how they're going to end up sharing that information but I know that they tried to capture sort of everybody's um, you know thoughts on um, how they felt about how the entire meeting went and then sort of like plans moving forward um, for how how they thought like we could kind of strengthen the relationships that we built over the week. Do you think Maggie that there was um, there was anything that was helpful to the disasters that have happened since then? Um, you know, the hurricanes coming through the Caribbean or the earthquake in Mexico. I mean, do you think there was anything that um, that was learned at this summit that may have been put into use for those disasters? Um, well, I mean, I think I, the, the thing that kind of made me um, uh, chuckle a little bit was uh, uh, 
and I, maybe I shouldn't, but like our, our disaster scenario basically had a um, large rainfall event, um, an earthquake and a volcano. So I had remarked to my colleagues that like our disaster scenario was basically unfolding as our, <laughs> as we uh, were, were coming back from, from the uh, summit. But I, I think that what we were trying to do um, as far as like reinforcing what we were presenting and learning at the summit was um, sort of the, the, how earth observations could um, enhance um, disaster response. And um, I'm not sure that we necessarily made um, a, a huge number of connections in, uh, you know, sort of the Mexico and Caribbean region. I'm not sure how many people we had um, that were there, but I know that, um, the, uh, let's see, I think Irma, and Katia were um, active and the first earthquake hit while we were down there. So we were definitely like the disasters program was activated while they were happening. So they got to see a little bit of our process while we were um, down at the summit. That's really interesting because the, uh, you know, the whole idea of, of Introducing, I guess, some of the some of the processes that that NASA is involved with and the U.S. is involved with with gathering um, disaster data. I'm just wondering if there was was any of that response activity or data sets that were gathered were they shared in any of the sessions? Sort of like I know you had your exercise, but were did you did you use all archive data for that exercise? Or did you dive into anything real? Um, let's see, I think that we, um, we did a lot of, um, sort of, um, mocked up data for the exercise, um, but then we tried to respond, so we had a sim cell for the exercise, and when the different, um, sector groups sent emails, we tried to be responsive with, um, information to them, and, and a lot, uh, so the research group actually was being very creative and, and came up with some products on the fly, um, with the information that they were given, re um, regarding the, um, scenario, so they actually went out and, like, got, you know, got information, um, and, and started creating their own products. For the simulation so that was kind of cool the research community you know in their little sector like came together and and started creating their products and sharing it out um to the other uh sectors during the simulation so um i didn't see a lot of that because i was running around um, trying to control the room but um, we do have that information and um, we'll be able to share it Um, also, also um, the the Open Street Maps um, humanitarian Open Street Maps team was there, and they were trying to run sort of a real real time um, kind of situational awareness table. And so they were they were um, working with the different um, sector teams to to kind of come up with some situational awareness products while they were um, going through the scenario as well. Yeah, that sounds good. I I, I think um, you know whenever you're at some of these meetings and a real disaster or disasters happen, it's such opens up an unforeseen opportunity to really share the types of data that are being collected. Uh, and, you know, like you said, people can see it unfolding in front of them. Um, did anybody have any other, uh, other questions? Maggie, do you, do you have any idea on the, on the poster session, how that went, or you weren't involved uh, directly with that? I wasn't actually at the poster session. I was, um, I was uh, kind of here and there doing other stuff, but I know I, I spoke with Susanna and she said that um, she she was at um, all of the poster sessions and that there was a lot of um, interest in the poster and she got a lot of questions and people were very um, uh, they 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 were very interested in, in what was going on they 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 uh, they came and came up and talked to her and they they looked at uh, the, the the general cluster um, part of the the poster but they had like a lot of specific questions about the different projects as well. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I. Maybe she has that. Uh, she has the disaster exercise simulation tabletop. Well, we'll we'll let we'll let people access this, and we should probably put this um, document. Ken, did you say that it was it was put in there? We'll we'll put this in the notes for the call today because Karen did did share it. Um, Susanna, I apologize, but she's in Geneva this week and uh, wasn't able to join the call to give us uh, an update, but. You know, once everybody gets a chance to read her summary, 
perhaps that'll stimulate some questions for the next uh, telecon that we have uh, to see how we might you know leverage anything that was learned uh, down there to see if there's any opportunities for um, some sort of uh, collaboration or working together with uh, with anyone that attended that meeting and to um, Maggie were you were you uh, under the impression that David was able to meet the goals that he had outlined or you know his his goals that he outlined for the meeting were they accomplished um yeah I think so I, I think that it uh, overall I, I think he felt it was a, it was a success I think that we're gonna um, do sort of a debrief at some point and sort of do a lessons learned I still have to um, put together sort of a debrief for my team um, for the exercise I just haven't um, had a lot of time I've I'm trying to catch up we, we've had like activation after activation for the program so we're kind of scrambling to kind of keep up with that so I think we've we've kind of um, fallen a bit behind on on following up with the um, the summit but I, I think that um, it, it overall it was a, a success and, and we're we're working on trying to get debriefs together and, and get the teams together just to kind of um, get all of that wrapped up how was the internet connectivity down there oh I don't, I don't think we had any problems with it that we had um, uh, the hotel ballroom had um, Wi-Fi, and so there. I don't think there was um, any problem with it. Great, great. Okay, that's cool. I, did anybody have any questions for uh, for Maggie on the on the summit? Okay, I see we have one or two callers. I don't know uh, that just say caller. Stu, are you on the line? Okay. Um, not not hearing Stu, we can we'll, we'll take this document that Karen forwarded and we'll put it into the notes. Bruce, I don't know, is that something that you can you can place in uh, into the notes? Yeah, is is the link in the chat? Um, the well, I just have a Word document that uh, that Karen forwarded, and I think you were on that email too, but um, I can certainly forward okay. it to you. At yeah, let me check my. Did you just forward it to, to the list? I I just forwarded the doc. I didn't forward it to the list. I forwarded it to um, to Bob and and Ken because when I typed in disasters, it was not the right list. Oh, okay. So, All right. So just uh, yeah, just give me the link and I'll throw it in the notes. Yeah, I I I've, I've got the document here, Dave, so I can put it in there too. Oh, you can put it in the Google Doc? Yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. So, um, Maggie, thanks for that. And and I know that everybody's been pretty slammed with uh, all the uh, hazards and disasters that have been going on in the last uh, 45 days. You know, since that summit, uh, like Maggie said, we have already already had Harvey. Irma was active. And, um, and then there was an earthquake. Uh, and then we had Maria. So Maria, you know, as we all know, um, you know, flattened some more uh, Caribbean islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, and British Virgin Islands, and then and then uh, made a, a direct strike on Puerto Rico, and and uh, they're still uh, in serious disaster mode and still trying to get the people that have been impacted. And it's been two weeks, uh, just about, from that storm. So. Um, it has been a really active time. Uh, we were able to support the, the All Hazards Consortium and some of their activities to, to support the movement of fleet utility vehicles around the country. So the, uh, the test bed um, instance for GeoCollaborate, the Fleet Response Working Group uh, test bed has been up and functioning and and has been quite a resource. So I'm trying to capture um, some of the, you know, those that visited and feedback from those folks. Uh, we, we did have a, a great opportunity to work uh, directly with Esri. I think, Trip, Trip, you're on, right? I saw your name. Yep. Yeah, so, um, so I worked with, uh, with Trip and others at Esri to try to get um, access to some services that Esri had put up 
So we could really help with uh, real-time traffic and getting reports of uh, roads closed because of flooding. You know, one of the big things that, you know, the movement of fleet utility vehicles, uh, what they're very interested in is they don't want to turn down roads that are flooded. And so um, Esri, through their disasters program, once um, trip maybe in a minute, you can you can give us a, a little bit of feedback on what what has to happen for you to stand up your disaster services. But we sure. were able to take advantage of that and add a service link into the Geo Collaborate Fleet Response Working Group dashboard. So anybody that was coming into that area could zoom into Houston. Uh, and into Louisiana and see individual roadblocks for roads that were flooded, which was which was very nice. It in integrated the Waze uh, reporting. Um, we certainly haven't had any time or effort gone into whether or not all those reports are accurate. But uh, certainly when you zoom in to the road level and you see little roadblocks there saying, you know, road closed because of flooding probably resulted in a police car being there or some sort of blockade being there. Uh, but to see that on a map beforehand was really very, uh, very valuable. So we're trying to find out, Trip. I don't know if there's, maybe you can help us out. We're trying to find out what that service, you know, where it comes from and what that service costs to have in a dashboard like this, because I know the All Hazards Consortium is very interested in it, not just for, you know, responding to disasters, but you know, to have it as a layer that might be accessible is, I think, something they're interested in. Mm -hmm. so take a sec. Um, sorry, Trip. If you can take a second just to outline for everybody what the disaster services are for Esri and what it takes to stand those up. Sure. Um, so the Esri Disasters Program has an overview website that can always be hit at esri.com forward slash disaster. And that disaster um, website is essentially the central request portal um, that is always active. The website's always up. Um, and it's got a variety of disasters themes. So hurricane, volcano eruption, tornado. Um, so that even if we don't have a specific page up for a specific disasters yet, um, for instance, I was I was uh, looking as Dave was saying that to see if we've got something up for Nate already, um, and I wasn't seeing that we do. Um, so even if something isn't necessarily up um, for a specific event yet, you can always request assistance in anybody, even if they're not an Esri customer, anybody globally who is preparing for ahead of time a disaster, um, who is responding to a disaster, who is operating during a disaster, um, can get access to free ESRI licenses um, through this program. Um, ESRI Services Division is also involved and can assist groups who need help um, with automating things or creating a dashboard very quickly or, or, um, or kind of creating some type of information product that might not know how and may have zero GIS experience kind of thing. So, um, and that's that's all free. It's all kind of just Esri being a good corporate citizen um, through the disasters program. Um, essentially, it, it can really activate for pretty much any level of disaster as long as there is um, some state of emergency declared by a state or a county or something like that. Um, they're pretty good about responding on it um, and activating against it. Um, for major disasters, we have started standing up um, central sites where we're aggregating different services that are being put out by all of our different users that we know about. Um, so there is an open data site for Harvey, there is an open data site for Irma, there is an open data site for Maria. Um, we're obviously hoping that Nate does not strengthen that much more before hitting the Gulf Coast, but if it does, um, there will be one for that as well. And that's where they tend to um, aggregate a lot of different services coming from our different customers. Um, one example of this, uh, recently from the NASA side of things uh, for Maria is those guys have been posting the Veers day night uh, power band um, stuff with before and after um, imagery at any time they can get a break in the clouds um, for people to consume and that's 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 posted there so that people can know that NASA is serving that out and and consume their stuff so um, 
it's there's there's destinations that are being put up and you guys will see those um if you go to the site and kind of scroll through um around specific things so if you're ever looking for something that's a good website to hit to try to see where um we're responding on different pieces dave you specifically mentioned the Esri World Traffic Service, um, which pulls in uh, different data from ways and cities and, and all kinds of different reporting mechanisms for live traffic feeds and things along those lines. Um, that is considered an Esri Premium Content Service um, and can be put inside of dashboards and web applications for users to consume in exchange for service credits. Um, service credits can be used for a variety of things. They can be requested through the um, disaster response program uh, if if you're you know applying for disasters assistance there um, and to get a, a specific um, kind of view of how the service credits are used I'm trying to look up that um, that exchange rate for you guys right now um, because it is on a views basis um, so it looks like the where are you I think it comes in at about a dollar per a thousand views or something like that um, for those premium services like the live traffic service. Um, but I can confirm that for you guys and, and get back to the disasters ESIP listserv. Um, does that help, Dave? Was there anything that I missed on that? No, I think I think that's good, Trap. I, it's good. It's good for everybody to to understand. You know, when disasters happen or or perhaps before they hit, you know, what kind of data sets and data services open up because ultimately, um, you know, as we turn around back to the ESA Federation for information that they have that they may want to put up somewhere that, um, that you know, it's the more situational awareness uh, we can have, uh, the better. And uh, I know that um, for, the, uh, for the traffic information, yeah, during Harvey, uh, it was great because, you know, we put that service in there. It was traffic for the nation, but the ways only showed up for Texas and Louisiana, which was probably a good thing because we didn't, we really weren't interested in tra in the ways reports and anywhere else because that's where all the fleet utility vehicles were, were heading. Mm -hmm. um, and then Irma hit Florida, uh, and I was curious to see if that traffic layer and ways would open up over Florida, but it didn't. Um, so I needed to, uh, I, I actually didn't get back to Esri to see if there was a new link to add Florida into it, but I assume that they probably had one. I would think so. Um, I would, if you don't find it on the disaster site um, down where the Irma stuff is, let me know and I can send that to you. Um, it might not be as relevant now, um, but I do believe, you know, if they if they had it for Harvey and Irma, they probably got it for Maria as well. So it'd probably still be very irrelevant for the, Maria piece, and um, I don't. I, I dialed in about seven minutes late, so I don't know if Maggie already gave you guys a update. But the NASA disasters um, portal is up and running. It is any day now going to clear security approvals for public facing, etc., um, from the NASA IT folks. Um, we delivered the first automation script that'll stand up the GPM near real time service. Um, last Friday, so I would expect that to be stood up um, probably next week sometime. Uh, something that's been kind of bugging me, flirting with my brain is, all right, well, we got Nate coming. Can we maybe push them to accelerate the security approvals and standing the service up before Nate hits on Sunday? Would that be relevant? Would people be looking for it? Um, is that worth doing given um, that would be the only thing there? Um, so I'd be curious to hear the group's thoughts, uh, especially from working with the All Hazards Consortium, because that's something that I can bring up with the program. But um, obviously, the GPM service is the first of many um, that will be coming uh, to the disaster system. Um, as an update from the Esri side, we are also working very hard. I've had to buy a lot of pizza for the developers over the last week um, <laughs> before 10 6 code freeze next week to get full support inside of. ArcGIS 10.6, which is expected in January for the new GO satellite um, from the NOAA side of things for both the advanced baseline imager, which frankly, I don't know what that does, um, but 
also the global lightning mapper, which I know is very important to my NASA folks, and I would imagine are would be especially important to the the fleet response working group that that this cluster has been working with, because you don't want linemen out when lightning is happening. Um, so uh, that is something that's that's probably coming in the near term. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn my. Uh, I, I was just while you were talking, I was. Um, I was going to bring up the dashboard here, and in this uh, this imagery in the uh, in the fleet response working group dashboard, um, I'm going to just refresh uh, refresh the dashboard here. Uh, has Nate in it with the latest Hurricane Center forecast? It's coming directly from the Hurricane Center, and the satellite image that shows up over it is a GOES 16 satellite image, which is great. So, so any of those. Um, you know, services that you're standing up, I mean, particularly the, the GPM stuff too, uh, you know, we'd be interested in getting a hold of those, uh, those service links. Um, so they can, that data can be brought in and tested. You know, we wouldn't throw it right up into this dashboard, but um, uh, here, let me turn on the, the GO-16 uh, water vapor image here. So, so this is the latest updated every uh, five minutes uh, the the NOAA GOES 16 satellite image. So, um, just letting you know, Trip, that's the latest uh, operational satellite that NOAA has uh, put up there in geostationary orbit, which has uh, got the advanced baseline imager, which you mentioned, which is a very high resolution sensor and can um, uh, you know can really give us uh, as meteorologists good in insight into different levels of the atmosphere and where moisture is and all that sort of stuff. So you know, we zoom down like here, you can see uh, Nate uh, right where this cone is uh, starting. It's kind of looks kind of disorganized now because it's uh, interacting with land, but uh, it looks like it might, uh, you know, the Hurricane Center's forecast is for it to strengthen into it back into a tropical storm, go over the Yucatan a little bit and then get into the Gulf of Mexico and become a hurricane. Uh, right now, it's uh, it's forecast to be uh, about a 80 mile per hour hurricane, which is category one, but wind gusts up to 100. Uh, certainly, the the trajectory is not uh, a pleasing trajectory for people in New Orleans, uh, Southeast Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. But this far ahead, um, you know, the track could could easily change. Um, you know, one other thing with regard to the dashboard, I just want to show everybody how that worked. Let me just turn off a couple of um, a couple of other data sets. I'll turn off the Hurricane Center's um, uh, latest advisories or latest uh, um, prob wind probability forecast and dive it down into Southeast Texas. If everybody's able to see the um, uh, the screen share part of the, the webinar here, if you're if you're not and you're you have access to a, a web site, you can just go to frwg.geocollaborate.com and that takes you to the dashboard. Um, and I'm just working on the dashboard here. I'm not working in the collaborative uh, area. But the closer I get down into the Houston area, um, that's when uh, the uh, we can get more traffic information and I can turn on the Waze alerts. And the Waze alerts show up, you know, right now they're they're probably not, here's the road closed up here. Uh, you know, during the during the floods, they were all flooded road closures. So, you know, you get down close enough and you see the, the road closure uh, information. That's the, the top layer. This is the uh, road closed event and it says, um, if it were flood, it would say flood. Down the bottom here, it says construction. So that shows you that the traffic is not moving there because uh, it's the road is closed for construction activity. So um, that was really nice to be able to turn around and get a service that was uh, st that stood up uh, by Esri and a combination of Esri and Waze. Um, but Bob, you you may notice um, the widget that we added down here on the in the left hand side, which was also very helpful, is the population calculator, uh, which we worked with uh, uh, Bob Chen and CDAC on to to enable on the dashboard now 
for people to click the population tool, select a shape, uh, select a freehand polygon, uh, go into draw, and then if there's a certain area that was closed because of flooding, you know, to outline that area, uh, let let the mouse go, and it's going off making a real-time query to CDAC, and it comes back with the estimated population in that area and the land area itself. So, so you know, what this really shows is a very, very powerful capability to use web services now to uh, to interact and allow people to interact with additional data sets uh, that the Federation, Federation partners, others, you know, uh, other partners can come up with uh, to pull right into a dashboard environment. So um, th this was something that got high praise as well. So we're, we're looking at trying to capture some of that information. And, you know, Bob, you and I have talked about this for a while and we put it into the leader capabilities but we also uh, added it into the into the follower capability and the dashboard so people could outline their own areas and determine their own uh, you know population densities in certain areas that they're they're concerned with um, yeah trip we we don't have access right now to the gpm data and that's something that, that would be great as well as the goes uh, 16 lightning uh, data you know they're looking at different ways to make that available and put that up so uh, it'd be great to uh, to connect with that just to give, uh, if anything, feedback to whether or not that, you know, those data streams and those services are helpful. Understood, Dave. I'll go ahead and mention it. Uh, I'll, I'll send the email over to the, the program to see what I can uh, what I can get them to maybe consider. Um, we have been working. I know some of my teammates have been working with the Department of Interior GeoPlatform.gov. Um, which traditionally hasn't very ha had very much with respect to disasters uh, as far as relevancy, but um, has stood up a central disasters page that FEMA and Highfield and um, others will theoretically be um, reporting into in the future. So I think you'll see that link become a little bit more robust um, over the next six months for future disasters. I also posted in the um, link to the Maria assets in the in the GoToMeeting chat um, include, and I, I do want to highlight that NASA Black Marble stuff is still being updated. Um, there was a Passover today that had relatively low cloud cover that really um, gave a lot of perspective. So it's, that's still being actively updated and there's other um, kind of components in there that's relevant. Um, and I'll, I'll paste in the, the Irma links that I know about and, uh, and Harvey links too, um, so that we've got them for the notes. That sounds great, and and that geo platform uh, that DOI is set up, that's all Esri based, right? Um, kind of. Uh, so they've they've got some non Esri stuff in there, but the disasters uh, dot geo platform site that I sent is Esri based, and that's got some web services and stuff like that that people can consume. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, that'd be good. I saw that they had something on uh, federal news radio or something about that, about how they stood up a platform that, that all different agencies were accessing, which is um, which is good. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, we understand what's going on there. So uh, any other types of data can be incorporated into that. Or, you know, how does that geo platform uh, and their disasters platform sync with the NASA disasters uh, capabilities? Because, um, you know, it could be real easy for agencies to stand up their own disasters platforms when somebody's supposed to have the lead on that. I suspect with data, but maybe they're maybe they're you maybe they're getting access to unique types of data sets uh, that uh, DOI is collecting, or something like that. I think that that they are registering each agency's individual contributions. So if NASA has a page, then it'll reference the NASA page. If um, FEMA has a page, they'll reference the FEMA site. If, if Highfield has a page, they'll reference the Highfield site. So I think it's it's just a landing page pointing folks to those uh, various resources, more so than unique resources itself. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So is this, so is DOI have the lead uh, for, for doing this kind of activity throughout the federal government? Um, DOI has the lead for the geo platform, which in theory is a central geospatial data.gov type thing for geospatial data. Um, and they were saying, all right, well, what's an area where 
many agencies are participating in doing something already with geospatial data and um, and disasters was an area where many agencies had uh, robust or developed capabilities. Um, so that's one of the centralization areas that they uh, decided to start around. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, I don't want to dominate it, the conversation. Um, Bob, did you have any uh, questions or, or observations? Uh, we did have some good feedback on the population tool, which is which is nice. So. Uh, we should start, you know, talking about other types of data that can be uh, we can dive into that might be helpful for decision makers. Yeah, definitely nice to see it working. It's definitely nice to see it working. <laughs> and uh, and people were were pretty pretty happy with it. Um, I just want to try to capture and see who that was, so we can do the same kind of process for any type of you know, federation data, federation partner data, agency data that might be collected and used. Because, um, uh, you know, it's it's one thing to stand up portals and make data available. It's another thing to capture how is that data being used and uh, what kind of decisions is that supporting. So we can kind of grab within our cluster that data life cycle, you know, in the disaster process from data collection to processing to serving it to accessing it to making a decision is really that that life cycle that we're very interested in so we can continue to, to um, uh, evolve the whole concept of trusted data sets so i think that's good does anybody else have any uh have any other uh input anything they'd like to share with regard to the disasters that have happened over the last 45 days uh and how you may uh have contributed or data sets that you're looking into or anything like that Uh, this is Kevin Clean. I have a different question, though, backing up to, I guess, Maggie. Um, on the South American um, thing, was there anything about getting NASA data that was feedback of uh, problems, challenges, or things that they um, could use to get at the data better? Um, I'm not sure that. Uh... I, I wasn't in on a lot of those discussions myself. Um, we were trying to test some of the uh, processes a little bit with the um, the disaster simulation, um, but it wasn't necessarily to pull down NASA specific data. It was to show kind of the process of like how all of the different sectors could work together. Um, I don't know, Stu, are you on? Let me send him, I think I have his number. Let me send him a text and ask him if he's joining the call. Okay, um, so I don't know if, if there were specific um, sessions that dealt with that particular issue, um, but I know that they're gonna try to put together some sort of, um, I don't know if they're gonna put together a report, but there's probably gonna be some information that came out um, from that. Um, but yeah, one of the things that we did wanna identify were the gaps. Um, between you know the end user and the data providers and um, one of the things that we did want to identify in, in um, having the tabletop exercise was you know how um, people could work together to get the information from um, providers and um, the people that generate the products into the hands of those that would be using them so um, we're going to take a look at the feedback that we got from the, the um, individuals that um, participated in the exercise and OGC is working on um, preparing a report for that. So I know that we'll have feedback as far as that goes, but um, as far as specific feedback as um, how people could um, access the NASA specific data, I don't have that information handy. Okay, well, thank you. And I'm just interested if, if uh, there's something we can do better, so thanks. Stand by or by, I just put my mic on mute while I'm just giving Stu a quick call to see if he's available. So while, uh, while Dave is doing that, um, the latest I've heard today for uh, the 10.6 release is that we have also support for Sentinel-1A-1B has made it, which is obviously important for earthquakes. Um, so you guys should also see support in 10.6 for Sentinel 1A and 1B um, if you're working with earthquake um, emergency data at all um, in the future, guys.
Oh, that's great. Agreed. I got a I got a hold of Stu. He's uh, he's calling in. He, I think I don't know if he was on another call or whatnot, but he's he's calling in right now to the, the call. So, so Chris, how you're getting the Sentinel data? That is uh, an excellent question, Bob, um, <laughs> uh, because the set Sentinel data is available from the Alaska Satellite Facility Vertex system, but my understanding is that it is not geolocated. Um, and that is somewhat raw data. Um, so how people get access to the Sentinel A1B1 or 1A1B data is something that I actually have a question out today uh, to my technical team on um, because I had some other folks asking me about it. Um, but if you can get access to the geolocated GeoTIS, then it will be supported if that makes sense. So an excellent question, Bob, and um, one that I'll, I'll make sure to send you the information on when I hear the answer to it. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is Stefan. Um, yeah, because I work on getting the data from ESA. We have a high-speed link to Goddard, and then we send it to, uh, a lot of it goes into the cloud. Um, we have an Amazon Web Service cloud that Alaska works with, so um, we're trying to be able to supply that data quickly. Gotcha. So sorry, Seth, and I will uh, I'll make sure to keep you in the loop on that then and connect further on it. Hey, uh, Steph, and this is Dave. Uh, where are you located? Are you do you working with uh, what uh, ground stations or data sets are you working with? Well, I work with the uh, at Goddard Space Flight Center with the Estes project. So um, we handle all uh, NASA's Earth observation data sets. Um, how they're how they're stored, distributed, and we kind of oversee all the things like the, uh, as you mentioned, Alaska Satellite Facility ASF. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So, do you work closely with Gina? Who? I'm sorry. Uh, Gina, the 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 group at the University of Alaska Fairbanks that does a lot of the, the polar orbiting uh, receive. Uh, capabilities? Well, I work with the people directly in um, in ASF. So I don't know if Gina is one that observe, uses that. I, um, yeah, that, the last, that's the Alaska SAR facility, right? Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so, so what kind of um, data sets, uh, Stefan, do you guys have that are, that could be considered almost near real time? Do you have anything that that uh, that you would access and make available, uh, and what kind of formats are they available in? Well, um, there's a variety, of certainly stuff that that's uh, available, um, and they, we have a program um, that distributes the data, makes it available three hours after collection. So this is, you know, a set of the data that we we process. Yeah. Um, and uh, so some of the higher precision products, you know, come out later, and certain things. So um, the resolution, you know, is like 250 meters. So it's, you know, it's not like the uh, digital globe data. So it is wider, wider stuff. We have polar orbiting satellites like you talked about, um, in addition to the, the Sentinel type of stuff that we get from the Europeans, the, uh, there's a lot of Earth observation that goes down to 250 meter pixel resolution. So it's usually 50, 500 and 1,000 pixel resolution depending upon what bands and stuff um, right. we, we do. So that's globally, um, available and and i'm sure that all that that data itself is data sets that that would be available um uh in the in disaster response it's all part of nasa's uh effort to get their uh, yeah. around the all, all NASA data um that that we collect you know not ones that we have con um some contracts with or whatever um uh is publicly freely available to the globe 
No, that sounds uh, that sounds terrific. That was a that was a great um, you know a great discussion on on various data sets and the the Sentinel data. That's something that I'd like to learn a little bit more about. Um, what can you give a couple of sentence overview on what Sentinel data uh, allows us to to see? Well. Um... So, um, Tripp mentioned the earthquakes. You can see deformations uh, of the land. You can also use it for um, oil spills, um, you know, variety of things like that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not the, you know, the full full depth. Sure, no, no worries. Those are the those are the big things that we use on that. But then, say the other. Um, Data sets, you, you know, you can see volcano, uh, the plumes going, you can see smoke from the, the fires. Um, so, you know, those are different, different things. Sure, sure. No, that sounds, uh, that sounds good. Stu, were you able to, to join us? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Oh, hey, Stu. Hey, thank you for, for uh, jostling me. <laughs> I'm just working away here. No worries. Uh, we were we were talking earlier, Stu, um, with Maggie, and Maggie was giving us an overview of the meeting uh, down in South America, and yep. uh, you, you provided with us with a little bit of a summary uh, via email. I think that just may have gone to Karen and myself. So I was just wondering if you could take, um, you know, maybe uh, three, four minutes and just talk about uh, your experiences there. Yeah, sure, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, I um, had to finally introduce myself to Susanna on the very last day. <laughs> couldn't couldn't find her the whole time, but uh, I was kind of busy the first couple of days with uh, the original meeting that was set up, you know, about a year ago was just between the CIOS. Um, disaster Working Group and the thing called the Amerigias Disasters Group. So um, I wonder if anybody on the phone needs to have me explain CIOS and GEO. I think you probably all know what those are, right? I'm, I know I'm, I'm pretty hate, familiar with it. Just, uh, okay. Yeah, I hate yeah. to take my three or four minutes to give that kind of background, but... Uh, you know, the, the idea is, is that uh, we had this regional meeting in Buenos Aires where we invited all, there were 340 people there, where a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of them were data providers, but a lot of them were practitioners, disaster managers, emergency response people, civil protection, you know, the full range of users that we would like to be able to claim that use our data. And uh, the first couple of days, I was busy back and forth between the CIOS Disasters Working Group meeting and the Amerigios meeting. I sent you the notes to the Amerigios. Uh, the, the minutes of the CIOS Disaster Working Group meeting are still being cobbled together. But the main thing is there's a that uh, site you got access to is where we're posting all the materials from this uh, the the meeting. And we're posting it, and the organization of that Google Docs site is uh, first by room number. And so if you want to see what happened in each room, you got to go back to the agenda of the meeting. And the agenda of the meeting, the link to that agenda is contained in my report that I sent, Dave. So you go to the report, you find the agenda of the meeting, then you can see what happened in each room on each day. And then you can go to the website, the Google Docs, and find the documents that were presented and each room at each day, because we had a we had five rooms going here. It's really a, kind of quite a quite a circus. So, but and uh, so, dude, yeah, go ahead. Let you know, I have your document that you sent me up on the screen share portion of the uh, of the web web back. go to meeting here. Okay. Well, great. If you I don't know, it, it's somewhere in the first uh, three or four paragraphs. There's a a link to the uh, actual uh, meeting website, the CubeWorks uh, location. But uh, before that, I think at the very top, I put the Google Docs link uh, where the materials from the meeting are all being posted. 
So it's um, that report is the kind of the, the key to unlocking how to navigate, you know, you got to go to the, the link that's the, the website for the event, which is called the Regional Disaster Risk Reduction Summit, strengthening uh, ERR across Americas, co-hosted by NASA and CONI, the Argentina Space Agency, and attended by, we had lots of people, Chile, Argentina, Brazil, Puerto Rico, uh, I'm sorry, um, Haiti, we had uh, Costa Rica, Barbados, um, uh, Ghana, Ecuador, uh, you know, uh, lots of different representatives and delegations there. So let's see, and uh, Maggie did a great job on uh, walking us through on the Thursday. She she was in charge of the entire Thursday agenda where, uh, you know, 80 or 90 people that uh, participated in the exercise where we were trying to walk through a scenario um, and see what each kind of group would be doing, uh, you know, the, the people that are providing the data, the the responder groups, uh, we split into several groups and had a, a, a very good exercise and well, there will be, I'm sure, a report on that, right, Maggie? Yes, uh, OGC is preparing the, the report. Yeah, and that, that report will hopefully end up on that Google Doc site too at the end once uh, we get it reviewed and approved. Um, I sent you the preview, uh, Dave, and, and sorry, Karen couldn't make it, but um, uh, that's still, you know, first draft. So if, you know, I'm, I'm still, um, I'm in the process today of sending it out to the participants of that particular session um, so they can give me some input and then it'll be final. Then I'll post that report on Google Docs for right now. The Google Docs for the Amerigeos session has pictures and all the presentations that were made. Yeah, so, I didn't see those. Uh, no, yeah, go. Pulling up a little bit, Stu, with, uh, with the pictures on day one. Uh, and I see some pictures in day two for, uh, for the Amerigeos meeting. Yeah. Um, no, this is great. It's great to document as much of that as possible. It'll give us all an opportunity to feel like we were there too and, and, um, and participating and kind of getting engaged in some of those discussions. Were you able to capture any pictures of the poster session or Susanna presenting the poster? Um, no, I'm sorry. I uh, kind of was, I was pulled into a bunch of these uh, emergency, we got to talk now kind of things and uh, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Get, you know, <laughs> like I said, I didn't even get to introduce myself to her till like Friday morning. <laughs> and, uh, it was like, it was a whirlwind kind of thing. And uh, I, I, I really had a great time there. I hate to say it because guess what? They had a grand piano in the lobby, and I sat down every afternoon and evening and played it. <laughs> had a little crowd around me, and it was pretty fun. So anyway, that's, cool. that's my report. <laughs> no, that, that sounds great. Does anybody have any questions? Now we're about one minute over uh, our, our time, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, Stu, you were able to, to connect with us and combination of yours and, and Maggie's, you know, make it sound like it was a, a pretty cool meeting and, you know, we just need to dive into some of the presentations to see what was presented and what the relevance might be to what the ESA Federation, you know, as a whole might be able to, uh, you know, to provide or to help uh, with, with uh, situational awareness and decision making. Right. So uh, the, the other, uh, Dave, the other caveat is that, uh, you know, half of the presentations, unfortunately, uh, not, you know, unfortunately, but half are in Spanish and half are in English. And we had we had full translation back and forth in, in every one of these rooms. It was pretty uh, incredible. So, uh, you know, what I've been using a lot lately the last couple of months is just Google Translate. <laughs> so I could at least uh, kind of follow along with some of these things. No, that's cool. Do you know if those audio were those audios uh, the audio recorded for posting? Oh, the uh, oh, that's a good question, Dave. I'll I'll go find out. I I don't know if uh, any of the translation audio was recorded. It could have been. I'll find out. Okay. Yeah. No. No. No worries. Um, well, that sounds I, good. I, I, I we had uh, you know I know that we had recording on for 
the WebEx sessions, but we didn't have WebEx going in. We only had WebEx in three of the five rooms for some reason, I think, maybe four. But but WebEx recordings were going on, but they didn't include the translation service. And, you know, that was a little bit too much beyond us IT-wise, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's fine. Does anybody so, have any other questions for the Stu? translation service could have recorded themselves. I don't know. I'll check. Okay, that's yeah. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate the opportunity to speak to the group. No, this is this is great, Stu. I I appreciate it, and um, I was just looking uh, here real quickly to see if um, to see if Karen had said anything about the about the meeting um, that she wanted to cover here because we can always cover more in the next meeting. Uh, we have another storm that uh, seems to be forming uh, in the south of the we're in the caribbean and we'll probably be moving up into the gulf of mexico so we'll all have our uh, you know have our binoculars on uh, from space and looking to see what's going on with this storm and following the official hurricane center forecast i think if nobody has any other questions we'll, we'll call it an evening and uh thanks to everybody uh for for joining bruce thanks for setting this up and recording this and trip thanks for all your inputs as well um, I think we will we'll definitely have a lot to talk about in the winter meeting uh, coming up with regard to disasters and how uh, how you know things are coming to get our arms around all the data sets that are out there and available and then most importantly matching those data sets with users because uh, what we're finding in a lot of the work that we're doing nobody even knows that these data sets are available so uh, the other part of the work that we're doing with uh, identifying trusted data sources is also uh, just as important because uh, people who who don't have any idea about data sets will tend to believe anything they can get on the internet. And we want to make sure that we're there as a trusted source so decision makers can uh, can see that the ESA Federation is out there with its arms around a lot of partners and uh, open and welcoming so we can we can get data in the hands of people to make it uh, make it matter. So uh, that's it for me. If anybody has any any uh, thing that they They'd like to say, please uh, speak up. Uh, otherwise, we'll call it a day. Um, Stuart here one more time. Just uh, wanted to point out the geo plenary meeting is uh, October 22 to 26 in D.C. So I'll be there. There's going to be an Amerigios booth and a side meeting on Monday the 22nd for Amerigios. So. And, uh, and Stu, also, um, Aaron is uh, going to have an ESIP booth there. And uh, we'll be there uh, setting up uh, on some monitors, the dashboard and geo collaborate to show um, how we're accessing various data sets to bring in a real time collaborative environment. So so we'll be in the in the ESIP booth. I don't know a whole lot about it. Aaron and I are supposed to speak next week, uh, but there's also going to be another uh, person that's sharing that booth, too, uh, that Aaron mentioned. Um, so so that's good. And. Bob will be showing the uh, inter inter uh, operability between, you know, uh, the collaborative environment and uh, and putting our hands into CDAC and pulling out population data too. So uh, I think it should be pretty pretty exciting and ho hopefully open the eyes of some people. Yeah, I'll look forward to seeing you there, Dave. That's great. Awesome. Sounds good, Stu. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining the call. We'll uh, we'll sign out now and. Look